For a time, Indiana head coach Terry Hepner also called Miami of Ohio home. He succeeded Randy Walker as head coach when Walker left for Northwestern in 1999. Over the years, the two developed a tight bond. Terry spoke at his funeral and said it was the hardest thing that he'd ever had to do. He and Randy were very close. The head man in Bloomington since 2005, Hepner shared a similar vision for success, like his close friend did for Northwestern. I'm sure a lot of people thought he was off his rocker. He's enthusiastic and he has good intentions, but this is Indiana football. And it's, it's a place where a lot of people have come and tried to be successful and they haven't been. You look back on the, on the Terry Hepner years at, in Indiana, you, you look at it as a time when the culture was changed, when a lot of traditions were born. The walk, which he started in 2005, he wanted the fans to line up on either side and, and make a tunnel-like situation and for those players to walk through it. The second thing was the rock. And uh, he started calling Memorial Stadium the rock because it's made out of Indiana limestone. And so they wanted to find a rock that would symbolize the rock, so to speak. And they found this gigantic rock and, and uh, somebody called Hep over and said, take a look at this. And he said, that's exactly what I'm looking for. It was on that rock that they were going to build the foundation moving forward. Terry Hepner had people talking about Indiana football again. His positive attitude touched every aspect of his life. So, when he was diagnosed with a brain tumor in 2005 and had surgery to remove it, Hepner never doubted he would beat it. Terry's attitude was to not quit ever, ever. And so, if you knew him, you knew that the glass was always half full and that, you know, we're just going to beat this thing. Everyone believed this, that knew him, that if anybody could beat brain cancer, it was going to be Terry Hepner. The Hoosiers won their first two games. Hopes were high the program would win enough games to become bowl eligible and play postseason football for the first time in 13 years. On Tuesday night, there's a hastily called press conference where they announced that Terry Hepner is going to have a second brain surgery. He had just told his players that night, needed to have it the next day. So on Wednesday, September 13th, he has that uh, second uh, brain surgery. When he found out he had to go in and have another surgery there after our second ball game, that's when I think it, everybody got a little bit nervous and, and knew that uh, um, this was going to be a tough, tough road. The news of Terry Hepner's second brain surgery shocked Indiana football, but it didn't dampen Hepner's spirit. No problems, just opportunities. He said that so many times. He would say that. He said that after both surgeries. I have no problems, just opportunities. And that's how we looked at life as, um, you know, bumps in the road, obviously, but doable. If we don't quit, it's doable. Hep has his brain surgery on Wednesday. On that Friday, there was a board of trustees meeting in Bloomington where they were going to talk about the new facilities, the North End Zone project that was kind of Hep's vision for IU football. This is two days after his surgery. As the meeting starts, all of a sudden the back door opens and here comes Hep walking in with his wife, walks right through the middle of the room, sits in the second row. I mean, he's there two days after brain surgery because that was so important to him. I mean, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. Bill Lynch was named interim head coach in Hepner's absence. When you're going through it, you, know, you take everything, not only day by day, but hour by hour in terms of uh, making sure as a staff we're putting together a good plan and the players are able to stay focused. Um, you don't, but it's a distraction. You know, to sit here and say that these kids could totally focus. I mean, Hep was a guy that they all really cared for and, and uh, you know, he wasn't there. Indiana lost their next two games to Southern Illinois and Connecticut. It's the week before the Wisconsin game for the opener and Hep's back, and it's 11 days 
after uh, his brain surgery and he ended up coaching. He was on the sideline for that Wisconsin game um, to, to start the Big Ten season. He's going to take every guy, every guy. He's going to take every guy. Let's fly around. Let's have fun. Turn it loose today. I'm turning it loose. If in doubt, I told Coach, hey, we're turning it loose. We're holding nothing back. We're going 100 miles an hour for 60 minutes. Everybody's excited. He's back. And you think, well, the team will play pretty well this week and it did not happen. He just got blown away. It was not a good performance, and this team was just struggling at this point. Next on the Hoosiers' Big Ten schedule were the young but scrappy fighting Illini of Illinois. The Illinois ball game, it started out just like the Wisconsin game. Indiana got behind early, they were struggling, and I saw Coach Hefner absolutely go off on the sideline of that ball game. Illinois scores three touchdowns in the first quarter, gets way out in front. You know, Indiana rallies back and, and gets close, you know, gets it to within, um, you know, a, a one-point game in the fourth quarter, but they're still down. You know, Austin Starr has a chance to put them ahead. He has a 33-yard field goal and he misses it. They get one more chance, the last play of the game. Austin Starr has a 33-yard field goal again. He comes over the sideline and Heff just looks at him and says, kick her through, dude. Austin went out there and he said that relaxed him. It was like, you know, there's no nothing on my shoulders going out there. I'm just going out there to do what I do on an everyday basis. It is good! And the Indiana Hoosiers win on the final play of the game, a 33-yard field goal. That whole moment was like his defining moment as a collegiate kicker. It wasn't about, you know, anything that had happened before and the one that he had missed. It was all about, hey, I know you're going to make this field goal. Just go out there and, and, and make it. And he did. And, I mean, that was a huge win for Indiana on the road. And so kind of got them back on track again. In Bloomington, Terry Hepner's return and positive attitude had the Hoosiers thinking about the postseason. We hadn't been to a bowl game in a number of years and certainly um, felt like it was a team after the Illinois win that, that we, we were good enough that we could go to a bowl. To achieve their goal, Indiana needed to win at least four games against Big Ten Conference opponents. Standing in their way were the 13th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hawkeyes were very good. and. Anybody that knows anything about the Big Ten knows that Kirk Ferentz is one of the best coaches in the country, not just the Big Ten, in the country. Terry Hepner wouldn't let the Hoosiers underdog status deter his team. Nobody really gives Indiana much of a chance to win that game. And the players said when he walked in the locker room that day before that game, he pointed at a couple people and he said, hey, I'm just telling you, we're going to win this game. There's no doubt in my mind we're going to win this game and here's how we're going to do it. They went out and they just played a heck of a football game. And James Hardy was tremendous. Uh, and Kellen Lewis was tremendous. These two guys offensively they did everything you could ask. Indiana's James Hardy caught three touchdown passes while quarterback Kellen Lewis threw for a career high 255 yards. An interception by Will Myers on the Hawkeyes' final drive preserved Indiana's three-point victory, their first over a top 15 opponent in 15 years. It was the biggest win for the program in many years, and it gave this team, I think, a ton of confidence. Indiana finished shy of their postseason goal, and in six months, they would lose their inspirational leader. Terry Hepner passed away. He was 59. Bill Lynch was named head coach, and in the following season, the Hoosiers fulfilled Coach Hep's goal of playing 13, making their first postseason bowl appearance since 1993.